Hello, 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 and welcome everyone. We are so glad you're here. Welcome to a night of community. We are live with you and we cannot thank you enough for joining us on this wonderful Saturday night. We are celebrating the launch of Young Adult Survivors United and really the many, many lives that have been touched since the inception just seven months ago. I just wanna stop for a second and say, this is pretty cool. We're having a gala, we're here tonight. We so much appreciate you being with us. I'm Shannon Perrine, I'm from uh, Pittsburgh's Action News 4. And I just wanna say, if you right now are wearing sweatpants, then you get 500 bonus imaginary points. So raise your hand if you are wearing sweatpants because I totally am. So we're dressed up here and we're comfortable here. Hopefully maybe you have a little beverage, you're relaxed, you're in your home, and we can just have a little bit of fun tonight and celebrate a really important thing. Okay, many of you know that Stephanie Scaletti has really spent years building this community, and that's what it is, a community. And tonight, you're gonna see the impact of that. So I have been following and supporting this initiative since I really found out about it. And it was two years ago, I did a story on Stephanie and a lot of the work she did and some of the young people that she's touched um, two years ago. And I've, I've sort of followed her path so here with us tonight, uh, I really want to introduce the president and founder of Yasu, Stephanie Scaletti. Stephanie, take it away. Thank you, Shannon. Good evening, everybody. What a pleasure it is to have Shannon with us tonight. I am Stephanie Scaletti. I am president and founder of Young Adult Survivors United, and I'm celebrating 15 years of being cancer-free from leukemia. Yes, as a young adult. We have so much to celebrate tonight, and I want to first thank each and every one of you for walking this journey with us tonight. Launching Young Adult Survivors United was always a dream. It was always a vision I had after surviving leukemia. I was determined in my passion for building the most loving, supportive, trusting community for young adult cancer survivors. It just grew over time. Young Adult Survivors United launched March 1st, and two weeks later, COVID hit. So what did we do? We pivoted like everybody else. We became a virtual wellness community and we listened to the survivors. We increased all of our programs. We ran some emergency funding campaigns so that we could provide grocery gift cards to these survivors who were more financially strapped than ever before. None, none of that is what we anticipated, but we listened and we thrived thanks to you. We have so much to celebrate tonight. I am beaming, I am glowing. I cannot wait for you to see this presentation that's to come. Before we do that, there's just a couple of things we have to go over first. One, I need to acknowledge a handful of people because without this group of people that I'm about to acknowledge, I wouldn't be sitting here in front of you tonight, I'm telling you. So let's start the night off by thanking the Young Adult Survivors United Board of Directors, including Dr. Munzer Aga, Kimmy Peterson, Brian Donner, John Fahey, Yolanda Murphy, Mark Burnett, and Jay Wilson. Thank you from the very bottom of my heart for your dedicated support. I also want to acknowledge our sponsors tonight. Again, without them, this event wouldn't be successful. So thank you, Argo AI. Thank you, Target, UPMC Hillman Cancer Center, Abridge, Allegheny Health Network, Compassionate Certification Centers, Saliva Wellness, UPMC Center for Rehab Services, Edgar Snyder and Associates, cheer for you. And last but not least, Earth Elements. We wanna invite you all to visit the event website after the presentation. We really don't want you to leave this presentation because it's so special that you stay and see the videos that are, that are to come. So stay tuned, we'll be giving you the website link if you don't have that already. But before I hand it back over to Shannon, I have to announce the winner of Wig Out Week. For those who don't know, all week since Monday, We've been having people all over submit pictures on, on social media. They've been posting fun pictures, wearing Halloween wigs. I've seen everything, short wigs, tall wigs, big wigs, colorful wigs, rainbow wigs, wigs on dogs, wigs on babies. It's been unbelievable. I've been following every single one of them. And I thank you all for joining the fun this week to raise awareness for the organization. But tonight I have to announce the winner. It was not an easy decision, but drum roll, the winner who wins a $100 Amazon gift card is Ashley Smock. This girl went all in this week. She was a unicorn. She was a mermaid. 
she was a fall tree and she had like all these leaves wrapped around her head. <laughs> it was unbelievable. And I'm also thrilled and honored to announce that you'll see her in some of the videos tonight. When she goes all in, she really does with her whole heart, even when it comes to ovarian cancer. So stay tuned for that. But I do have a small surprise. There was someone else who really went above and beyond and I couldn't go without acknowledging that too. Stephen Welsh. You blew our minds away. This guy knitted his entire wig and he also knitted the words wig out across his, the top of his head. Steven, you didn't win an Amazon gift card, but you did win a surprise gift. So stay tuned, that's coming in the mail. I'm gonna turn it over to Shannon now. Here we go, Shannon. All right, Stephanie, that's great. Congrats to both of them. I know Steven, he's a talented artist. I have yeah. some Steven uh, Welch um, originals in my house, so. Congrats, we know how creative uh, these folks are. That's just great. So we have a big goal tonight, but I really believe we can do it. The goal tonight is to raise $30,000, okay? It's ambitious, but it can be done. And it's important. That $30,000 is going to fund Yazoo's financial assistance program. And you may know that that provides real financial relief to survivors who are struggling to pay for medical and non-medical expenses. Right now, we're gonna hear a little bit about how people first got involved. I became involved when I started here at Hillman. There was already a core group of social workers here that were already involved with you and the group you had initially before things grew bigger. Um, and they kind of sang the praises of the group and what a benefit it was to our patients. Once I started referring patients on my own, I was able to see that firsthand and have been with the group ever since. I had the opportunity to learn about the group when I heard from Stephanie Scaletta who was kind enough to reach out to me at the suggestion of Dr. Aga to talk a little bit more about what the foundation um, actually does for patients, what we're able to do to help link up the patients with the services, both social support and financial. And I think it took all of about 30 seconds before I was excited uh, to learn about the mission and wanted to be part of the support and to get that word out here at Hillman. As an oncology social worker, I want to provide young adult cancer patients with the best resources available. And after meeting Stephanie, um, I understood the passion and dedication she had for this population and what an amazing local resource Young Adult Survivors is. I love that the organization focuses on a young adult population, which I think is really underserved. They may be juggling a job and kids and fertility issues and elderly parents and you know other 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 cancer populations just don't have that never realized that a group did not exist that helped mentally spiritually emotionally support people between the ages of 18 and 40 that were going through cancer a, a disease that that may or may not take their life I became involved in Young Adult Survivors United because my wife is the one who runs the organization and I didn't have a choice. But I wanted to be a part after seeing these young adults battling and I couldn't be more happy to be involved. It was stage four at the time. I was 19 years old. I'm going to be 26 in about three weeks. They put me on some heavy dosage chemo. I've been in complete remission ever since then. You know, it's been a struggle from the beginning, but I think my real struggles kind of started once I finished treatment and I found myself in a, in a new normal um, that I was trying to get adjusted to. I was diagnosed in 2007 with uh, stage 2B triple negative breast cancer. And at the time, <clears throat> there was nothing really out there for um, survivors, patients, um, anybody kind of going through cancer as a young adult. So I went through it alone and fast forward a couple of years and um, just kind of needed some help even though I was past the treatment stage. It was um, not over for me. My journey I think was still just beginning. Um, and so I reached out to a couple of places and met Stephanie and um, we just kind of clicked on the phone and I loved you know, everything that she had to say and what uh, the group had to offer. And so I started. October of 2018, I was diagnosed with uh, prepatellar clear cell sarcoma, grade three in my left leg. 
and I did three surgeries and six weeks of radiation and was in the clear. And then February of 2020, uh, they saw spots on my lung in a routine uh, checkup. And now, uh, officially it was June, I was diagnosed with metastatic uh, stage four sarcoma with METs in the lungs back in the left knee and my pelvic lymph nodes. Well, I was actually diagnosed when I was 19 years old. I was near my 20th birthday and I was diagnosed with AML leukemia. It came as a surprise and I felt really alone because not a lot of people that age have cancer. And so I was looking for any outlet possible and Young Adult Survivors United came about. I uh, had hit a point right after being diagnosed to where like I was tired of the like constant affirmation of like everything's gonna be okay and like although like I believed that in a sense I also wanted like real like people who understood me and so I reached out to my uh, nurse navigator uh, who set me up with a psychologist and then the psychologist recommended me. I am a two-time breast cancer survivor. I was diagnosed the first time with stage two in 2016, and then re-diagnosed I was stage one in May of May 22nd of this year. I was diagnosed with breast cancer, um, invasive ductal carcinoma on May 1st of this year. Um, I found it myself and went to the doctor and, and was diagnosed after a series of biopsies and ultrasounds and mammograms. Um, one of my best friends knew someone that had breast cancer and she connected me with her. Um, she's a fellow breast cancer survivor. Um, her name is Nikki and she introduced me to the group. And this is the first group that I had ever been in or, or heard of. Honestly, is a lifesaver for me. Um, the support is incredibly amazing. Um, the financial support obviously helped tremendously, um, being that I lost my job. Uh, in the midst of treatment the first time around, um, trying to find different groups out there with support, um, not only financially, but emotionally, mentally, you name it. And they've been there for me, not only my first time, but also the second time, and even for my family. So I was diagnosed with stage three grade C ovarian cancer at West Penn Hospital. And I had a nurse named Barb, who kind of plopped Young Adult Survivors United in my lap. She said, there's this organization that's run by this girl, woman your age, her name is Stephanie Scaletti. She wants to help out, give her a call. The financial help is there, the support is there. You'll meet people your own age. She said, you're our youngest patient here by far. You need to at least check them out and call the organization and the rest is history. I was diagnosed with stage 2B breast cancer and I, being a young adult, that was very scary to me. And I liked the group because it was a place where other young adults understood what I was going through and understood the whole process of being diagnosed, uh, the treatment and even the after part of it. And it was so nice that you went into this group and it wasn't a competition. It was always a supportive group. I have stage three breast cancer. I was looking for other young adults going through a cancer diagnosis to help me through mine. I started going to the socials for Yasu, and as we went, as I was going to the socials, I was picking up more on, you know, just how to give that support, what to say, what not to say, and I think it has forever changed our relationship. Well, our daughter Haley um, was a member, and we got to see firsthand just the amazing things that she got from the program. And um, it, it really it changed her it, from it, being... It was a place that she could go and, and feel comfortable to be with people near her age who had experienced some of the same things that she had with her cancer treatments. So amazing. It's wonderful to hear those stories and um, hear firsthand just how Yasu has touched um, not just young cancer survivors, but their families as well. Um, grateful parents. Um, so many stories. And so like all the folks you just saw in that video, 
when I met Stephanie Spalletti and saw the work she was doing two years ago, I did a story uh, for Channel 4 with Stephanie. I was inspired. And I know if you've met her, you can't help but be inspired by Stephanie Spalletti and also inspired by all the people who are in that support group and everybody who's who's in this group um, really working together. So right now, um, you know, you've heard a little bit about how they all they all found Yasu and how they happened and started their initial contact with Yasu. But now let's see a little bit more about how beneficial the programs are and exactly how they've inf impacted real people. Young adults are actually a minority among cancer patients, and they have special needs. Unlike uh, most cancer patients, the cancer hits them at a very, very difficult period of their life. Uh, unlike the uh, mature adults in their 60s who already had their life established, they have had their job, they have their family, young adults are actually looking to get their life started, and then they get hit by this major illness and they need a particular attention, and they need a special support that is not the same as the elderly population. It's truly a, a very unique organization. There are not a lot of other groups out there that cater to this demographic. You can search the tri-state area, you can search nationally. There is no support group that supports specifically young adult cancer survivors, any type of cancer. When you look at a community, it's really important to get support from that community, especially with the nonprofit that is new to the world, if you will. Really, when you think that when people have gone through this experience in their life, it, it never goes away and it's always there. And, and the support that they need is ongoing. Not only that, but, but these are the people who are gonna be the next generation and are gonna teach others about uh, what we're doing and provide that support. Everyone of all ages, a parent should teach their child how to support organizations like this because these diseases, these, these awareness campaigns will affect every generation. So if we start building them now on this level and, and teaching those around us how to, to, to be so, we will create a much larger community of love. Given that it's a specialized population group, they deserve the specialized support. And so we found that by being able to offer them these additional services, that they are able to partner with others that have gone through similar journeys. They've been able to uh, get the support they need, not just from our own teams, but from those who have walked that walk. Young adults battling cancer need to know they're not alone. They need a place to turn um, for support and to truly um, connect with other people who understand what they're going through. It's this age where they're becoming adults and they're, they're trying to grow up and to suddenly have to deal with something like a cancer diagnosis is really, really challenging. Their lives are just um, so much more complex that I think that it's really um, important to support them through that, that whole journey. And a lot of times it's a single parent that's looking after their kids and finances are tight and then they get hit with cancer on top of that. It is our job as the community to lift one another up. I, I feel the word community is, is modern religion. It's universal spirituality of survivalship. Not only are you helping me, but you're also helping an entire community of young adult cancer survivors be able to get the resources that we really need and deserve. And, and I think that our daughter Haley, um, when she first started her treatments and that, uh, she was just barely, you know, she was still in her teens in that, a young adult age in that, but she was in a uh, hospital wing with uh, people who were much older. Uh, and I think that the group for young adults and that for her was fantastic. For me, it was particularly difficult. Um, my father just went through cancer. Um, he was out of work for a while. And then not months after he was uh, um, had his major surgery for his prostate cancer, he, uh, we ended up having me diagnosed and my mom had to, you know, take me to the hospital at Hillman, spend days there with me. And what really, you know, helped alleviate some of those pressures were some of the were the financial grants that we would get every year. I never in a million years in my trajectory thought that I would be diagnosed with cancer as a young adult. 
and thinking about all of the aspects that fall into play, medical bills, that I, they're just astronomical. And there's really nothing you can do about it because it's like save your life or, you know, go into debt trying to, to figure it out. We're young adult survivors who still have lives. Um, you know, outside of cancer, we have families, we have children, um, you know, we have jobs. Uh, we still have needs that we need to, to meet just like anybody else. Every little bit helps, and I really do appreciate all the donors who uh, gave the little that, you know, they have. A lot of the businesses who were even affected gave what they had out of their pockets to, you know, help us out, and we're, I am grateful beyond belief and those help pay the groceries at home and my mom went to Aldi's and Giant Eagle and she had a heyday. Something can happen and we don't have, can't meet the financial needs of you know co-pays, prescriptions, treatments. I remember reaching out to Stephanie one day and said like I am just having a really rough week. We haven't been able to get grocery shopping, like I don't have the energy to make food. My, my other family members are busy with activities and I just don't know. I just don't know what we're gonna do. I feel like I can't be helpful at all. And that's when Stephanie got gift cards from donors that got involved and were able to purchase a meal for my family of four. And it was just the little thing that kind of gave us a chance to just breathe a sigh of relief. When I first started out with the group, it was my right at the beginning of my diagnosis. And in the beginning, you're getting all this testing done, you're getting medical bills coming in. So that first initial um, financial assistance really helped. Um, because, it, you know, the bill, medical bills start to pile on in the beginning when you're getting all the expensive testing done. Glad that I received a, um, the grant that has been helpful to uh, deal with, like, groceries and uh, doing things with my son just to make sure he feels supported. I needed help to have other people tell me how they were able to financially plow their way through cancer, but then it ended up shifting that the most meaningful part for me is the people that I've never met other than through the lens of my camera on Zoom, that I feel like I've made friends with people who have been there for me when life was hard and I've been there for them, and I can't wait to meet them in person, that just seeing them every week I think gets me through some of the toughest times. Having those resources and the grocery gift card was just, you know, it's a, it's such a weight off your chest of you're already worried about, you know, taking care of yourself and, and just making it through the day because cancer is so exhausting. I think that all the programs are beneficial in their own way, but I have most benefited from the support groups, the amazing people, and the financial assistance. People just don't understand outside of, you know, the, our loved ones, what we actually really go through on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, I can tell my parents something and they'll sympathize with me, but they won't truly understand what I'm going, what's going on mentally and emotionally as my counterparts and my co-survivors. So honestly, for me, it is the support aspect of it. I think there's just support groups and the socials. I, honestly, it's the first thing I look forward to in the week when I'm writing in my planner. I'm like, okay. So I know there's two designated times this week that if I have uh, you know, a moment where I just need to vent or scream or cry or fuss, I'm able to do that with people who just get it. We have become like a family and it's, it's just a nice place to be able to be open and talk about your feelings and vent. Co-survivors and caregivers are welcome to attend the socials and that has helped my relationship with my husband trem tremendously. Um, he re really struggled at the beginning of our relationship because he wasn't around um, during my treatment. So it's nice and it's important to have the co-survivor group to know that, you know, it's okay. I think a lot of people are uh, not really educated on how cancer affects uh, not only the person that has the cancer, but their family. Cancer is a bit of a roller coaster, and it really helps to have someone to help you along, uh, both for explaining things you don't know you don't know, and just to be there for you. Just being there, even if it's just an ear, I mean, there's not much that I could physically do, but I'm just let it matter moment. There's not a lot of support groups out there for the uh, patients going through the treatments, who have gone through the treatments, for the families uh, who are trying to support them as well. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were very grateful that we found that connection, that she found that connection, and we just want to pay it forward. 
they've been my crutch over the past couple years. And when I've, you know, kind of almost a thrown the towel, they've really had my back. I think to any business out there, a hair salon, a restaurant, a gym, we are congregation areas for our community. And we gather together there, we learn about one another, and eventually one of us raises our hand and says, I have cancer, or my child has cancer, my husband has died from it. And it stops you in your tracks and you listen. And, and as a business owner, I can tell you that I can't just end it there and say, well, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, I have to continue now, I have to be involved, I have to see how can I now help. Young Adult Survivors United was able to partner with an awesome salon and an amazing man named Dan who gave me my first haircut. And that might have not seemed like a lot, but it was really special that I had hair enough to get a haircut. And knowing that you have people in the world that want to come alongside you to help pay for something as simple as a haircut makes a big difference. So to anyone out there that's, that's wondering, well, should I get, how should I get involved? It's worth every moment of your life. Your life will change for the better, I assure you of that. Finally, we have someone who is passionate and committed to this cause, and I'm equally passionate for this, and we continue to support this, and I will invite everybody to join us in this. Well, those are just really powerful words. I know if you're watching along at home, um, it's very touching, and I, I really need to say that your support tonight, in this moment tonight, decision that you make tonight and moving forward ensures that these survivors and so many more out there just like them really have opportunities to get the help that's provided by Young Adult Survivors United. And that also means truly that they have a chance to live a happier and healthier life, both during cancer treatment and after cancer treatment for those who do get to finish treatment. So it's really important, your support tonight. It, and, it, and it makes a ripple and a tidal wave moving forward and it impacts other people too. So celebrating survivorships, you know, is always a really big priority. And it's really, it's really important to do that. So is remembering those we've lost along the way. The following individuals gave their all and it really is with truest honor that we recognize them tonight. We truly feel it's most important to celebrate everyone who has benefited from Yazoo, and we thank you for shining a light on our loving group members who are no longer with us. May we forever cherish the memories made with them. As you can see tonight, we need Yasu for all the reasons you've heard tonight. And if this organization, I don't like to think about it, but if this organization did not exist, where would we be? Something we need to think about. We asked our audience that question and this is how they responded.
without uh, the support for the young adults with cancer, we will be completely lost. We really have no way to address their needs. And actually, this is a much needed service that we've never had before. If I wouldn't have found this group when I found it, I'm not sure I would have had the same mental health uh, outcomes that I have today. Uh, I don't think, no, I know that I wouldn't have the group or the community that I call my friends and now my family. Without Young Adult Survivors United, I'm not sure where all of us would be as survivors. Young Adult Survivors helps so many families in the community that if we didn't have them, there'd be a lot more families that are having tough times in this pandemic that we're having now and even after. You know, there would be a lot more stress in their lives. I think there may be a lot more um, psychological issues, depression. Um, they'd be dealing with a lot more just because they'd be worrying where they can get groceries next or how much that's going to cost and, and things like that. I think um, helping with those things takes a lot of the burden off them. I don't even want to think about where we would be without the organization because there's just such a lack of resources out there outside of the group for young adults. Um, they have every need met there, whether it's social activities, financial assistance, friendships, bonds have been formed through that group. I think I would be more isolated with talking about what I'm going through because I, I don't ever want to be the person that everything's going, you know, this is all so rough and someone going, oh, that's so rough, you know, I'm sorry. And not that you don't appreciate that, but just having people say, you know what, that's normal. You're doing this, this all is normal, how you feel. And just having other people who've gone through it and say, you know what, it's okay. Parts of me that I never unlocked as a healthy person have started to blossom being involved with the organization. I think if you talk to Stephanie, she could tell you that I have told her many times that I don't like exercise. But for the organization, I pushed myself to run 5Ks every day in May. I got in shape. I helped combat the side effects of high blood pressure with a chemo regimen where the doctor said cardio was essential. I've met people and helped with things that I didn't think I would ever have interest in or opportunities around Pittsburgh I never thought I would have. That it got me out of my comfort zone. It's got me to do new things that I didn't think were possible. It's taught me to eat better and I've gone to different doctors and therapists and all different sorts of things based on referrals from speakers in our groups. Without the organization, I think we would see uh, more of a, a toll on the staff here at Hillman. Certainly while they try to work very, very hard to meet the needs of all of our patients, I think without this team and without this community effort, it would certainly create a, more of a strain. As a healthcare system, it's nice to have some place to send our patients for that support. I feel that sometimes people go through something so dark and when there isn't another set of eyes in front of them or words or just outreach, the darkness may overcome some. There would be a lot of young people who are amazing individuals that would be struggling even more financially, socially, and just unable to have people around them that are experiencing similar situations in their life. They would have no one to relate to. They would have no one that truly understands where they're at. I didn't have many people to talk to. And I think that we're learning even more in the world today is that a simple ear to talk to and someone to hear your story and especially someone to kind of, you know, who's maybe going through similar situations and maybe can give you some insight. There would be a lot of lost young adults out there. Um, there would be a lot of people that wouldn't know who to reach out to, wouldn't have someone to hold their hand, wouldn't ha might not even have somebody to go to treatment with them, um, somebody to hear the diagnosis with them. There's a, I, it makes me tear up to think about where we would be without it because I wouldn't be here. I know that. I don't know where I would be, but I wouldn't be here. And I'm sure that there's almost everybody else in the group would say the exact same thing. I don't know where I would be personally, um, because I, yes, I do, you know, see my psychologists from you know time to time. But again, it's nice to be in a group with like-minded people who just get it. I honestly don't like to think about where I would be without Young Adult Survivors United. Um, I'm very grateful to have them and I couldn't imagine my life without them now.
the love the president and founder has for every one of us. Um, sorry, I'm supposed to cry. It's amazing um, that she turned something that was so tragic in her life and made it so that all of us don't have to deal with it on our own. Um, that was, that's what makes me come back, her energy, her spirit, her love for everybody else. I probably would, wouldn't be, you know, as stable as I am today because one, you know, the financial assistance, two, the emotional support, um, and it's, it's just so helpful to help me get through everything I'm going through right now. I think I'd just be down in the hole, <laughs> like, uh, it would just, like, you, you can have other therapists and other groups, this and that, but sometimes you just, you can't get that, the click to happen. You just feel like no one's ever going to get you or understand you. Um, so I need that, like, cloud to, like, lift me out of that hole just so I don't feel so down and depressed and feeling like, you know, um, I'll never get out of this situation, so I need that help. This whole process is so frustrating and so just annoying, and, and everybody, a lot, I don't wanna say everybody, but a lot of people on the outside of it don't understand how annoying this process is, especially when you're a young adult and you're used to working multiple jobs, having all these activities, and now you're stuck on the couch or you're stuck in the house. If I didn't have Young Adult Survivors United, I would be struggling to find my place in the cancer world. I'd be lost in a world that has no experience dealing with the things that I'm going through emotionally, financially, physically. I can't imagine that crushing weight of debt that they may feel. And no matter what they do, those bills will always be there. I don't think that I would be as understanding. Uh, on what she's going through if it, if it wasn't for that because when she's on the zoom calls or the meeting calls I'm listening in I may not be in but I'm listening in on everyone's story and it, it, it gives me a better understanding that you know everyone that goes through it goes through it in their own different way it's really an honor and a privilege to be a part of the initiative for the group I think that what we've seen so quickly is that the energy has begun to take hold. We had the opportunity to bring in the education to all of our leaders and our staff here within the Cancer Center and I think really what we've heard is that um, now that we've got the word out and people understand what opportunities are for their patients, I think they've really embraced it and they've made sure that perhaps those that were not aware of the opportunities are now uh, more included as we get these uh, these pieces out to them. At the end of the day, like cancer is very heavy, and it's just a nice way to to bring light into the day or moment whenever it's hard. You know, we're out there, and we definitely need the help. I can't say where we would be without it outside of a, a worse spot. The thing I can th say is I think that really this is this is just the beginning of, of this organization and it's off to an unbelievable start and uh, I think probably the best is yet to come. Love that. The best is yet to come. Let's bring in Stephanie and talk a little bit more about that. Stephanie, if you don't mind, I want to say a little bit about what I noticed when I first met you and I was introduced to there, you, we were in a support group. We just were talking and you let me in and they let me in with open arms to talk about what was going on. And the thing that struck me is that everybody in that group sort of gave each other permission to laugh when they needed to laugh and cry when they needed to cry. And it was like a safe place and you creating that safe place for people going through this as young people, it, it was, there was a void. It wasn't there before. And um, it's really important. So I just want folks, when they think about those firsthand accounts from the videos uh, from folks who are involved with the group in different ways to think about a hundred dollars here and a hundred dollars there um, means so much more than money. It means peace of mind. Um, and, and just those two things, really those dual missions of providing financial relief and that peace of mind for people to buy groceries and medicine, and then also to have that support group, it's just phenomenal. 
Thank you, Shannon. I'm really just so humbled tonight. And I watch these videos with all of you. And I just feel like it is such a privilege to have this community that we built. And, and another theme that you hear throughout the night is family. So when you walked into that support group that one day, you see a family and they treat each other just like that. So, you know, we have built such a loving, supportive, strong community. And when we do get funds for the financial assistance, that's directly where it's going to, you know, groceries, um, transportation, childcare expenses, rent, utility, mortgage, all of that piles up. And a lot of young adults, as everyone knows, they have debt before cancer. So if we didn't have this organization, they would be so strapped. I mean, we even have survivors, believe it or not, are homeless um, that we're supporting. So it's just, you know, a reality check tonight. And I just sit here and watch the videos and I'm fighting back tears. So um, <laughs> I just feel that I am truly the luckiest person in the world to have this leadership position because who knew what my life was going to look like um, before diagnosis. So I feel that it is truly an honor tonight to be sitting where I am and watching it through my lens. Thank you. Yeah. And I, uh, the other thing I want to just say is that you talk about the folks who, who give, um, you know, people like yourself uh, and your husband and so many people who give to this group, whatever they give, if it's financially, if it's time, um, they're receiving so much more, uh, at least it feels that way than they give. And it is, it's an honor to have any, anybody associated with this group. It's an honor and a privilege, but Thank there's work you, to Jim. do tonight. There's work. Absolutely. And there's hey, yeah. and we finally have a big surprise that I've been so excited to share with everyone. <laughs> you know, it's been an emotional night. I'm one of them. And for those who we've remembered tonight, I just quickly have to acknowledge them because in our group, even to this day, those names get brought up, the memories get brought up, and stories continuously get brought up because they were family too. So I want to thank the families that gave us permission to honor them tonight because we want to always continue to do that because they're still very near and dear to our hearts. So wipe the tears off now, everyone. It's time to laugh. We wanted to end this night with a bang. And so <laughs> the one thing I have to share with everyone, when I thought of the name Young Adult Survivors United, of course it comes with an acronym, Y-A-S-U. And what I learned over the past seven months is everybody says it differently. So I had to <laughs> acknowledge that tonight since we're celebrating the organization, that is also part of it. There's really no right or wrong, wrong way, but I would love to hear your pronunciation, Shannon, after you hear this next video. Okay. All right, everyone. Get ready for some fun. Yasu? Yasu? Yasu. Yasu. I love it. Yes, you. I just go with the hang loose Yasu. That's how I do it. Pura Vida. <laughs> Yasu. Yasu. <laughs> Y-A-S-U. <laughs> Yasu, right? Yasu? <laughs> I don't know. Yasu. Is it yes, you like a college? Is it Yasu? Is it, I mean, I kind of feel like I'm saying Yasunami. I, I don't know. Is it yes, you or yes, you? I, I, I don't know. It, yes, you. Yasu? <laughs> Y-A-S-U. So I know how to pronounce it. However, the best one I've ever heard mispronounced is why ask you. God bless you. <laughs> why ask you? Am I just supposed to like say Yasu? <laughs> is that what I do? Just like Yasu. Yasu! 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 Yes, you. Yasu! The way that I would say to say the name of the organization that I love would be Yes You. I guess it, I, I would have either two. Okay. Either Yes You or Y A S U. Right, right, da, 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 da. Y S. No. Y A S U. Da, na, na. We are survivors. We are fighters. Everybody now, Y A S U. Come on. All right, all right. I'd say, Yaju. <laughs> so I think it's pronounced 
Yasu, but when I first was introduced, it was Yak Su with the with the C. But now it's just Yasu. So I think it's Yasu, Yasu, Yasu. <laughs> it's Y. Is this gonna be edited? Oh, <laughs> my best Y S A S U. Yasu, like that. My favorite Y A S U expression is when somebody says, do you like Young Adult Survivors United? And I say, yes, you? Yasu. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do like a really manly one because we need to get the men out. Yasu. That's more like a, that's like a Hakka one, like if New Zealand, you know what I'm talking about. You were down there. Yasu, that's like germ, never mind. I'm just gonna stop right there. That's outstanding. All right. <laughs> I'm going to say, I like, I mean, I like all of them. I got to go with, I, and I wonder if there's like a Yinzer Pittsburghese Yasu version. Ooh. I don't know. I think it's just Yasu. Yasu. <laughs> I say yes, like you, but I think we need Dan Berta to put together a song is what I'm gathering here. Cause he had a little remix that I was picking up on. I'm with some sampling, some choreography for yes. sure. We'll, we'll have get the to survivors do. behind doing some choreography. I can see it, Shannon. Yeah, and I can see us maybe doing uh, something for the auction next time that you can maybe, I, I don't, I'm just, I'm spitballing All here. Right. Good for <laughs> next time too. Yeah, you're stuck with us now. You're in the family officially, just so you know. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah, Sue, I say. Yeah, Sue. <laughs> It was so fun making that. I was cry laughing with every interview. Cry I mean, laughing. I, here's the thing about everybody involved with Yasu. They are not short on personality, Stephanie. No, no, we are really lucky. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> it's awesome. The, it, the night's not over yet. So, and, and honestly, like that was a fun part of this. It's so touching to see everything, but it's not over. You can no, still have a big goal here. Yes. So we have another... Uh, we have a lot of money to raise. Right now, we're currently at $12,405, so we need to get that thermometer up. You've heard the stories tonight. You've met the survivors. You've met the supporters who continue to follow our journey. You are now officially in our family, too, so welcome to our community. So now we're going to guide you. If you have pen and paper, or maybe you're already registered, which is great, but the website you need to go to after tonight is YASU giftsmart.com. We cannot thank you enough tonight for spending your night with us. We know there's not a lot to do out there anyways, but the fact that you're sitting there tonight with us, supporting this organization, we've been thriving and only operating for seven months, believe it or not. So we are just starting off. We have a lot more work to do, a lot more survivors to help, and we are growing immensely. If you believe it or not, Shannon, we already have representation of 12 survivor, or survivors from 12 different states. So just to put things into perspective, we're averaging 10 to 12 new survivors each month. So we're on track um, to grow very quickly. So, And Stephanie, I just have to say, I mean, we all know that the pandemic is a bummer, right? It, is, it has been awful and it's been very difficult. I'm sure specifically for young cancer survivors and people dealing yeah. with the diagnosis. Um, but I have to say, it's like one of those things when you talk about the fact that you're virtual now and who knows, maybe there are people you would not have reached had it not been for you being virtual. Um, you know, and they're coming to you now and their lives are touched now. Be, you know, a silver lining trying to, trying to find that, but your growth here is exponential. I also wanna say that a lot of times when um, you do something good, we're sort of trained not to tell people about it, not to brag about it. Um, but we want you to break that rule. We want you to tell your friends, you know, Facebook can yeah. be very toxic, but Facebook can be a great way to spread love. And it's not bragging because what you're doing is you're, you're making the circle bigger of people who can be touched by Yasu. And um, if you give a donation tonight or you bid on some really cool thing like penguins tickets or, you know, something amazing on, on the auction, if you do that, tell, tell people that's what you're doing tonight. And then maybe they'll feel that same love that you're feeling and get that same benefit and be able to help. So brag about it, you know, yeah. however you want to say it, but, but share it, share that Absolutely. you've participated in this. So other people know about it. 
And tonight was live on Facebook too. So for those who are watching from home um, on their computer or their device, um, you can also share the live Facebook link on the Young Adult Survivors United Facebook page. So we, um, we are a growing community and we just, I genuinely, genuinely wanna thank you, Shannon, for spending your night with us and hosting tonight and everyone who joined us tonight. We really hope you visit the website. I'm actually going to put that in the chat at the bottom of your screens. Um, you should be able to find the chat. You can click on that, to make things easy. I can hear you. And you can go ahead and the auction will be open until 930 tonight. So just so you know, for all of that, but please, if anyone out there knows a young adult cancer survivor, send them our way or anyone who's caring for one. You know, our programs extend to co-survivors, um, to grieving families, as you saw tonight. We really are just continuously growing. So if anyone out there knows anyone who needs us, please, we welcome them with open arms as you see tonight. We want you in our family. Thank you all from the very bottom of my heart. Take a look at our website. We'll be in touch soon and have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Thank you again, Shannon. You're welcome. Good night, everybody. <laughs>